got my crew chief back here, Steve Letarte. Before we get into today and what teams are trying to accomplish and answer some questions that fans have, uh, let's recap yesterday. What were your takeaways from day one? Uh, so honestly, I think there was a lot of concern, maybe some anxiety coming here, not knowing a few things. And I think yesterday what we did is put a lot of that to bed. What I saw was a lot of normal testing at the beginning of the day, single, maybe one, two, three cars together. Then NASCAR organized that group session. I thought the first group session looked very successful. The, the best compliment I could get it is, I don't know, it looked like Daytona, which is it the did. goal, right? We want it to look like what this track has always been. Uh, the magic of Daytona was there. We saw passes. We saw pushes. Um, even, truthfully, for preseason testing, I thought it got a little dicey. So then I think NASCAR was happy. They put it back in the hands of the teams. Uh, we saw a later session. I think that was more team organized because you get to a point here where single car runs are fine, but you're like, okay, enough's enough. We have to go that two or three seconds faster you go in a pack. Um, so that's what we saw yesterday afternoon. The rumor is, as I walk around, is we may see another eight or ten car pack somewhere in the middle today. Yeah, fans have a lot to look forward to. We've heard that there will be several runs, hopefully, with some, some pack racing going on. Uh, one driver that was testing out that pack racing and is really good at it is Denny yeah. Hamlin. But the 11 is not here for day two. What happened? So I, I asked Denny last night, and he said basically an engine failure. So, I, um, you know, it's funny because we talk so much about the car. Not to get into the weeds, you know, it's the same basic engine they ran last year, but anytime there's cars on racetrack, there's something to be learned. So you think Ford, Chevrolet, uh, Toyota, they're going to use that opportunity to try to find more horsepower. Why would you not? Uh, so I don't know if they were trying something or if it was just a failure or perhaps, I'm not going to blame Denny, um, <laughs> but since he's not here to defend himself, maybe he did something. Who knows? All right, DH, we're waving to you if you're back home <laughs> in the lake. Um, okay, uh, fans have had some questions on the stream as well, but well, let's get into some of the technicalities of this race car. First, let's hit on the exhaust because fans are wondering where the exhaust is located. Is it the same yeah. place? So for years, it was kind of open to the teams. Over the last 10 years, NASCAR made the rule that the exhaust had to exit the right rear of the race car. The idea was was, for, to be quite honest, really safety for the tire changer. It wasn't around there by the fuel. This car, it's dual exhaust. So it comes off the left side and the right side of the car. It never comes back together. And it, ex it used to exit right in front of the rear tires. Back the first time we tested this car, it was too warm. NASCAR made an adjustment to that. Now, if you look, it actually exits in front of the jack post. So on either side, dual exhaust, um, which is interesting because I think it's a little quieter outside for the fans, but a little noisier inside for us because of that left side exhaust. Yeah, what? I can't hear you exactly. say that one more time. A couple time. of those questions I had to kind of lean in. <laughs> um, and then under the lights at Daytona, we saw it last night especially, there's a light underneath of the car. A lot of fans are wondering what this light is. What is it? So you're not going to see that in racing. That's purely for testing. Um, when we talk about telemetry, and you hear drivers talk about all the data they're looking at, there's a certain set of data that's built in the car that they have every race weekend, and it's nothing the fans are going to see. Those sensors, basically, the best way to put it, is it, it tells you how much the car is slipping. So, you know, the cars, as straight as they look like they're going, they're really not. Like, when they go in the corner, they slide this way, slide that way. The tires move around. So it's just one more tool that the engineers are using. It does. It looks cool at night. I give them it credit does. for that. <laughs> uh, but I don't know how much those sensors cost. You definitely want a racing car under the lights. That'd yeah. be an expensive option. Sorry, race fans. You will not <laughs> see that on February 20th. Um, okay, I also want to hit on day two. We're about an hour, an hour, ten minutes into this testing session. Not only are we going to see a little bit of drafting practice, hopefully here soon, but what are teams trying to accomplish for the next seven hours? Well, I think when they loaded up to come here, there was a question on what the rules may or may not be. There was some spoiler size options, things like that. After yesterday, we know where that's at. So now I think the teams can go from maybe, you know, the big book of questions down to, okay, this is our last day before we come down here committed for the Great American Race with what we think we're going to have to have. So you see some single car runs to so work through some more questions. Like I mentioned, there's going to be some group runs. Um, some of this is a little bit as also what do the drivers need? It's great. I spent some time with Dale last night. And he was talking about how the car felt different in the pack and, and the driver controls and what he had to do. So it's been fun for me to listen to him get back in one of these things. <laughs> it's been fun for us to listen to you and Dale. We love it. Uh, Latard has already gotten almost 9,000 steps this morning. So rocking and rolling here at day two. Uh, we'll catch up with Steve later on today.